Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So I'm hoping that these videos are useful to you. Today's video is about my favorite MCAT resources. Uh, I actually used a lot of resources and I've tutored a lot of students now. And these are kind of the resources that I feel are things that really helped me get a 100 percentile score and things that helped a lot of my students as well. So I'm going to break this down into two sections. The first is going to be about um, the content. So when I, when I talk about content, I mean like learning all the information. And uh, this is kind of the best resources I feel like there are for learning content. Now, this is, um, this is, I want to just say that, you know, I haven't used all the resources. So if it's not included in the list, that doesn't mean that it's not a good resource. There's plenty of great resources for learning content. These are just things that kind of worked for me as a 100 percentile scorer and things that worked for a lot of my students. The first thing is the Miles Down review sheets. Miles Down is a really, really awesome person who, who is just a Redditor and created these really beautiful review sheets um, that that helped a ton of people get great scores and it just kind of condenses a lot of the Kaplan textbooks into um, these review sheets and the review sheets are only like 100 pages long, 120 pages long. This is actually one of my primary resources for learning a lot of the content. Uh, this was also kind of because my school classes had given me a pretty good foundation for the sciences necessary to know content for the MCAT. So the review sheets were having a condensed beautiful thing to read through um, that you know that I could kind of get through and figure out and finish and focus on it was kind of more helpful than a thousand page textbook because that's kind of what I was looking for that being said it's um it's really difficult to learn a lot of information from something that uh, is made to be a little bit more condensed and so if you if you are um, studying content I would say like just using the review sheets is probably not good enough just because um, there's going to be things that you don't know in the review sheets. There certainly were a lot of things that I didn't know. And so it's really helpful to kind of have a um, textbook like Kaplan or the Berkeley Review or um, Exam Crackers or one of those, um, you know, the Princeton Review, one of those textbooks that you can supplement with these review sheets so that if you ever encounter a concept that you don't really understand in this, you can refer to it in a textbook. That's kind of how I prefer to use the review sheets. But yeah, these once you get through all the content, I think that only going through the review sheets just to refresh your memory is, is just perfect for kind of making sure that you're refreshed on the content and you don't forget things. So this is a really great resource. Um, the other thing is that Milestone also posted, made an Anki deck out of these review sheets. And so this Anki deck actually, uh, if you don't know what Anki is, I guess I should explain that Anki is a, a flashcard app that helps you um, sort of learn information and it remembers when you last encountered a card and what you thought of it So if you thought it was hard or easy and it'll schedule your flashcards for every single day dependent on When you last saw that flashcard so that you don't forget information And this is a really great way to kind of memorize information and learn it so that you don't forget it And so if you're having a really tough time memorizing all the information in this review sheet Because there's a lot of information for the MCAT this Anki deck should really help you out and so I'd say that you know if you're if you're really really serious about kind of memorizing all the content, you feel like you don't have a solid foundation. The Anki deck will help you a lot. Um, another kind of added advantage of doing Anki is that in med school, like at least sixty percent of my class is using Anki to study almost every single concept in med school, and so the people who used Anki to study for the MCAT had just a leg up and kind of an added advantage in their med school studying just because they were really familiar with Anki and they kind of knew uh, how to operate it. It, it there's, a, there's a pretty big learning curve. I should mention that I only use the review sheets. I did not use Anki um, because I tried using Anki, but uh, I just, it wasn't, it wasn't working for me. And um, I kind of wanted to focus more on the practice question. So that's kind of why I used just the review sheets and not Anki. Uh, ultimately just do whatever works best for you. You know, it's impossible to learn every single concept for the MCAT. There's going to be things that you don't know entirely or you forget and that's completely fine. The goal is just to try to memorize or remember 90%, 95% of the information. The third thing is the Berkeley Review. Um, I, I got the textbook set. It is a little expensive, but it's really, really detailed. It has all the information you need and more. I will say that I didn't, I didn't go through the Berkeley Review as it was like as if it was like a textbook that I had to go through and that I didn't go through a lot of the practice questions. The practice questions here are really great. It is a little bit more detailed and more difficult than you probably need for the MCAT, 
which I think is completely fine if you're like pretty early into the game and you just want to like hardcore understand every single concept. But if you are a little bit more limited on time, then this might not be the best resource for you to go through completely. Uh, how I ended up using it was kind of if there was something. So I took a practice exam before studying and I realized that, you know, psychology, sociology and bio biochemistry were two of my weakest subjects. That's when I kind of looked at the Berkeley review and I was like, OK, let me try to learn a lot of the concepts that's not making sense to me through this. And so chemistry physics was actually one of my strong points in the early days of studying. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to not spend too much time using this for chemistry and physics because I feel like I know a lot of the information. And so that, that's kind of how I use the Berkeley Review to help me with studying. The next thing was exam crackers. So if it, the Berkeley Review is something that's a little bit too uh, thick and dense and contains a little bit too much information, this one exam crackers is like a, a little bit more condensed version of that it's like way way shorter a little bit cheaper too and um it it probably doesn't have all 100 percent of the information that you need but it kind of puts it in a simple way and um i think that these two actually made a pretty good pairing for me just because this went in a lot of detail if something didn't make sense and this went in a little bit too little detail, but it explained things pretty well. And this also explained things really, really well. So ultimately, I think if you're like a visual learner and you like pictures and nice diagrams and everything, then exam crackers might be a little bit better. If you really like reading blog posts and understanding the details of everything, if you like a Wikipedia style of learning things, then the Berkeley Review might be um, more for you. I will say the the Berkeley Review had some pretty awesome practice questions. Some of them were a little too difficult, but the practice questions in this textbook were kind of also an added advantage is that if you um, go through a section, you can do all the practice questions to make sure you understand that section. So that was helpful. Okay. Uh, the last thing I'll say for content is Khan Academy. Actually, sorry, second to last thing is Khan Academy. Khan Academy has really great videos. Um, one thing, sorry, I'll mention this right now is video speed controller plugin. If you don't have this Chrome plugin and you use Chrome, then please download this. This will kind of help you to adjust the speed. And uh, all you have to click is the letter D when you're watching a video and it'll speed up a video. So you can watch it at, you know, 2.3 times speed or 3.2 times speed. And when you're studying for MCAT, you're going to be watching a lot of videos to try to understand concepts. Khan Academy especially speaks very slowly. And so you kind of want to, you know, 1.5 speed it, 1.7 speed it. If, um, if you're just trying to get through the videos. If you if you really don't understand anything, then obviously just 1x speed it and try to understand it. But this, this plugin really helped me a lot when I was studying. So I think Khan Academy is a great resource. Um, the psychology sociology videos were absolutely phenomenal. Really, really great psychology sociology videos. Um, all the other videos are pretty good too. The best thing is that it's a free resource. So um, that's really awesome too. Uh, I really hope that they still have the MCAT resources. I know that they were thinking about pulling it down. Um, so just uh, take this with a grain of salt and check if they still have the MCAT videos up. Um, okay, the last thing I'll mention is YouTube, Google, Google Images, and Wikipedia. Um, if you uh, are taking the MCAT, you're thinking of going to med school. Med school, I will say that I was really, really struggling a lot in my first few months. And I got a session of uh, private tutoring from a fourth year med student. And uh, that was kind of the first time that I realized like, wow, um, just... The level of Google, Google Images, Wikipedia, YouTube that, you know, the top uh, top people use to study and learn concepts is pretty amazing. I mean, you have a Wikipedia or you have just an encyclopedia of information at your fingertips. And so if there's some concept you don't want to you don't understand, then Google it after you Google it and you understand it. If you Wikipedia read it and you Google it, you should have a good fundamental understanding of it. Then try to find some Google images that will help you imprint the information in your mind through a picture, right? Maybe a diagram, maybe like a lot of times when we're learning about different diseases, like, I don't know, esophageal varices. I didn't really understand that when I was learning GI in med school, but um, I looked at Google images and then I looked at the endoscopy images of um, what varices look like in the esophagus. And that kind of helped me solidify the, the image in my mind and understand what it was exactly. Um, so like Google image is a really great resource. Wikipedia is a really great resource. Google is a really great resource and YouTube is a great resource. I think that uh, I had a lot of trouble learning embryology, both for the MCAT and for med school. And when I YouTubed a lot of the videos of, you know, the unfolding of the embryo, that really helped me understand a lot of the concepts. So all of these are really great resources. Probably I should have kept this at the top um, because I think out of everything, this is probably going to be your best bet at learning everything that you need to. 
So whenever confused, Google it, it'll help you. Google images, it'll help you. YouTube it, it'll help you. Okay, now I want to get to the second section, which is the practice questions. And if you watch any YouTube video for, from any YouTuber who's making videos on the MCAT or any med school student, they'll tell you that one thing that they wish they did is spend less time on the content and more time on the practice. And I will say that I make it seem like I went through all these resources. I didn't go through all these resources. I kind of spent like two months and tried to go through as much, two or three months and tried to go through as much of this as possible. But it was never comprehensive. It was never like, oh, I read every single page from it. It was like maybe like I went through 20% of the Berkeley review or I definitely went through 100% of the review sheets. Um, but you know, you just kind of want to absorb as much information as possible. And then you want to go to practice questions and figure out what are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? What do you have to go back to and learn again? Right. And then you can YouTube it, Google it, Google image it, Wikipedia, it, and that'll help you. So for practice questions, I think the gold standard is the AAMC practice exams. Um, these are almost exactly like what you're going to get in the real AAMC MCAT. It's made by the same test creators. I think that one of the questions that a lot of people ask is how do you get a better car score? And I actually don't recommend people to do cars questions. Cars are critical reading, reading questions. Don't do cars uh, questions from other resources, just do it from the AMC because the AMC has a really unique style of asking these questions and you don't want to get accustomed to another um, format of reading questions. Uh, just get used to their reasoning and their logic for the reading sections. But in general, this is probably, it's a, it's a little bit of a shame that they don't have more practice exams available. But I think for you guys, they have six exams. For me, they had five exams available. Um, use these exams really wisely. Use them kind of to judge where you are. I think that most people are within a point or two of their actual practice exam score. So um, kind of that'll help you figure out where you are. A lot of people say just save these to the end, only use it at the last point. I used it throughout my MCAT studying, so I took the first exam before I even started studying. Uh, and that kind of helped me figure out like, oh, what is this exam about? What are the sections? What are the timing? What are what is like the format? All those things, right? What are the concepts that they're asking about? So that really helped me a lot. So people would say that, you know, I wasted an exam by taking it before I started studying. But for me, it was really helpful to kind of figure everything out. Um, I also took exams like in the middle of my studying and then one at the very end of my studying and I felt like that was probably the best thing for me. I know that, you know, a lot of people say just save them all for the end. That's what like most people told me to. And uh, I personally liked my strategy a little bit better of taking it throughout. If you want to take them all at the end, that's completely up to you and totally fine too. Okay, the next thing I think section banks are awesome. Uh, some of them are a little bit poorly written. It's still written by the AMC, but you know, this is a very, very difficult version of the practice exams. So if the practice exams are kind of like an eight out of 10 on difficulty, this is a nine or a 10 out of 10. Some of the questions are really difficult. Um, there's 300 section bank questions, 100 from chemistry, physics, 100 from psychology or sociology, 100 from uh, the last one, biology, biochemistry. And so these are kind of really really valuable questions because it'll help you figure out how to reason through questions how to get through information how to sift through it how to like get really tough questions and figure it out and so i'd say that like don't really focus on your score here because they're they're kind of made too difficult but focus on trying to learn as much as information as possible from the questions you're getting wrong and um, that would be a good good resource to use okay uworld is also considered a great um a great resource to do questions from. I personally could not get through all, they have like over 2000 questions, so I couldn't get through all of them. I maybe got through like a couple hundred questions. I think, honestly, I think UWorld was 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 good, but a, sometimes a little bit too specific for the sciences, so bio, bio and biochem and chemistry and physics. Those questions were a little bit too specific. I told you again that I never used uh, critical reading set questions from any other resource, so I didn't really use that for UWorld. But like the psychology sociology questions from UWorld world were just phenomenal those were really great questions and this is actually one of the resources i used to get uh 132 on the psychology sociology section um again bio biochemistry and um uh, and chemistry physics those were still pretty good questions from UWorld. world but i think this main strength was the psychology sociology questions okay next i started using third party practice exams because you know there's only six uh practice exams from the amc 
So I took Altius uh, practice exams. I think the really big benefit of this is that they have video explanations for the questions. Um, they also have passage explanations. So there would be somebody who, you know, you go through the exam, you take it, and then um, for every single question, there's an associated video. You can watch the video and it'll help you understand why you got the question wrong or what they're thinking about the question. And I thought that was like kind of one of the coolest things about this exam is that they also had passage breakdowns. So there would be somebody who reads the passage and then explains like what they're highlighting, what um, information to take out of it. And eventually, like when I took these exams, something just clicked for me that I was like, oh, I kind of understand this this exam a little bit better. I understand the passages a little bit better. I understand that like when they're showing an experiment, why they're showing that experiment, what the data is, what their data they're collecting. I realized that there's patterns in the reading. I realized that there are like certain things you should highlight and certain things you should just skim through. Certain paragraphs that are not even worth reading. So those things I kind of learned from Altius. So that was a really great third party resource. Last thing is next step. Um, next step was a little demotivating for me because it, those exams are just really difficult. Um, but I think next step chemistry physics was pretty helpful because the, the, the questions were just really, really difficult. And so I, I would get low scores and it would kind of force me to review my learning and make sure I'm getting things right. Um, I will say for both of these exams, again, I did not do the card section. So I, I did the other three sections, but I didn't do card sections. For critical reading, people asked what I did. And um, I, I did, um, uh, I'll put it right here. I did the AMC question packs but only for critical reading because these critical reading questions, I think they give like 200, 240, so there's a good amount. But these critical reading questions are really great. They're almost identical to the types of questions you're gonna get on the real exam. So this this is really helpful. Um, and the last thing maybe I'll add to the very bottom is the Khan Academy, if they still have it, the practice questions they have. Though These are pretty good too. So you can also use Khan Academy practice questions and um, obviously it's like not possible to go through all the questions from all these resources. So just try to get through what you can, but the goal is not the number of um, things you're doing. The goal is just the quality of um, of your studying and how, how focused you are during the hours that you're putting in. Um, so those are, again, my favorite MCAT resources um, that I've used to get a good score and that a lot of my students have used to get good scores. Really hope that this was a helpful video. Please feel free to leave any questions you have down in the comments and I'll be happy to get back to you. I'll see you in the next video. Bye, everybody.